we're going to talk about a pretty dull subject to some people, concrete. A lot of people don't even know exactly what the word means when you say poured in place, reinforced concrete. But it, basically you're building a form out of plywood or wood and you're filling it with steel and concrete and you have one shot to do three things. You're going to do the structure of this building. This, the, in other words, the building is held up by these structural walls. It is the architecture of the building because that's the finish and it's also the exact detail of everything about the finished surface of the wall and it's the architecture so you know you have that one chance and Luke Kahn had never done a building totally out of poured in place concrete so to do a masterpiece the first time is very unusual so the building goes down below ground about 20 feet all the way around when they were pouring the walls in the lower floor, they worked out all the different inconsistencies of concrete as much as they could. Concrete's still difficult to predict. But in this case, they worked on the form joints, they worked on the placing of these uh, ties, they worked on the surface details and all that. So I'm going to tell you what he did to achieve the, the work that we got. This surface is very smooth. And that's because he specified the panels be sanded and coated with a resin, like a polyurethane. That does a couple of things. It, it makes the surface smooth. It keeps the water from going into the wood. And you can reuse that panel more than one time. Where the panels come together, he cut the edge of the forms at a 45 degree angle. Because that joint would never look good and it actually covers up the joint between the two panels by doing that. So it's actually a very clever detail. These are called the snap ties. They simply hold the wood forms apart while the concrete's setting up. And you break off a wire and take out a plastic cone. But there's a raw piece of wire back there. And in the rain, you would have had rust down every one of these. So the lead is driven in to waterproof the hole but this is actually just part of the construction to hold the forms up. Um, these air pockets, they occur in concrete unless you vibrate concrete. In this case, they actually trained a young man to partially vibrate the concrete to get a, a, a partial, you know, fissures, but not too heavy. And so what they were trying to do was mimic the fissures in the natural travertine with a man-made concrete. So that's the purpose of the, those two things. Um, the color of the concrete, you notice, is not deadly kind of gray color like we get in some walls. That's because they added what's, what the Italians call pozzoluna, pozzolana, I think. It's volcanic ash added to concrete, which the Romans used two or 3,000 years ago. And it does two things. It changes, as I said, changes the color to more of a tan, and it keeps concrete uh, so it doesn't absorb as much water, so it, it resists the absorption of water to the concrete. So he did a lot of things just to do a plain wall, but it's a very durable, fairly good looking wall. He hoped that it would look like ancient stone by the time it aged and so forth. So I mean, is this three panels? Or they're, is this they're, one they're, panel? It's three different pieces of plywood so joined together, easy. yeah. And these are about four by 10, which is a kind of a standard plywood size and so forth. Now you can buy plywood with all kinds of finishes on it, but in the 60s he kind of had to make up his own formwork. So.